Excellencies, distinguished guests, honored delegates, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this high level panel discussion on digital transformation in support of finance and investment organized by the Islamic Corporation for the Insurance of Investment and Export Credit, ISIC, the insurance arm of the Islamic Development Bank, ISDBP. This panel discussion is the first of two ISIC sites as part of the ISDB Group Private Sector Forum, which is an established part of the proceedings leading to the annual meetings of the Board of Governors of the ISDB. The second ISEC high-level panel discussion on how credit and political risk insurance can help facilitate climate action will be held tomorrow in this very hall at 12.10 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, the ISDB Group, including ISEC, has prioritized digitalization as a key objective in delivering its mandates. ISIC is committed to investing more in supporting member states to narrow the digital divide between rich and developing countries and within states and bridge the transition to a digital economy. ISIC has identified the role of technology in trade, trade tech, as one of five key megatrends impacting global trade and investment over the next year. Its strategic risk priorities over the next three years include the deployment of extensive digitalization of processes and key risk indicators to flag emerging risks. ISIC is also leading the OIC Business Intelligence Center initiative, which will play a key role in enabling digitization of the credit ecosystem in member states that will facilitate further cross-border financing. In short, digital technologies have an enormous potential to unlock economic opportunities in trade, investment, agriculture, manufacturing, and services. Distinguished guests, we have an impressive list of prominent international speakers ranging from national and regional agencies, including the Central Bank of Egypt, Africa and Finance Corporation, Egypt Post, ISEC, and digital and fintech solutions providers and the commercial sector. We are all keenly waiting to hear their ideas and remarks on a topic, including digital financial services, that is optimistically considered by some as a very important step for financial inclusion, customer well-being, and even sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start the proceedings, we would like to show you a short video with a specific focus on ISIC's initiative for establishing the OIC Business Intelligence Center. systems around the world has led to more symmetry between borrowers and financial institutions than ever. But credit information systems in OIC countries remain far behind global standards. In 2019, private credit bureau coverage was estimated at 15.5% compared to the OECD's 66.8%. Based on their credit intelligence, four quadrants of financial maturity levels have been identified in OIC markets. The potential benefits of improving credit information systems in OIC areas could be vast, including an estimated $220 billion boost in private sector lending, an estimated 8% reduction in rates of non-performing loans, an increase in foreign direct investments, improved trade within OIC countries, and economic inclusion and empowerment for everyone. Introducing OIC Business Intelligence Center, or OBIC, a cutting-edge platform that aims to drive economic transformation. Anchored in its support of ISDB Group's mission of enabling innovative infrastructure to drive economic and social progress. OBIC will be a scaled multilateral solution building on the ISEC's work with the sovereigns, global and solution providers, with solutions tailored to the maturity level of each country's credit ecosystem. We look to offer a solution bundle comprised of two key categories, capacity building and credit intelligence delivery, the total of 10 related service offerings. 
We envision a hub and spoke approach with four regional groupings across the OIC regions, covering South and Southeast Asia, MENA, and Eastern Africa, Sub Saharan Africa and Caribbean, and Central Asia and Europe. This will enable full regional credit intelligence coverage, including consideration for official languages. As a crucial part of our implementation strategy, OPIC will be initiating pilot programs with select member states to test and apply our services and demonstrate our value for local communities, regional economies, and the world. OPIC will successfully boost OIC credit lending foreign direct investments, and intra-OIC trade, broadening the facilitation of financial inclusion and bringing greater prosperity to OIC members and the world. If you are an OBIC hub interested in learning more or being a part of the initial pilot programs, we welcome you to reach out. Without further ado, I would like to invite His Excellency Mr. Osama Qaisi, CEO of ISEC, to address this audience with his opening remarks. Please step up. start any of our discussions today without talking about the ongoing COVID pandemic and the conflict in Ukraine and that exposed the vulnerability of globalized economies to the shocks. These include supply chain disruptions, rising food and energy prices, spiraling inflation and cost of living crises severely affecting people worldwide. While these impacts have stalled the recovery from the pandemic, the consensus is that, although initially painful, they will be largely contained. But developing countries, especially in Africa, as for the IMF, will be the slowest to recover, exacerbating inequalities and pushing millions more into poverty According to the World Trade Organization, global trade has been more resilient during the pandemic than during the 2008 global financial crisis, reaching $4.8 trillion during the crisis compared to $6.2 trillion during the pandemic. Similarly, according to the OECD, the global foreign direct investment grew by 88% to reach $1.8 trillion in 2021, compared to the same level with an increase of 37% above the pre-pandemic levels. In both cases, the gains have primarily been driven by OECD states within the developing countries are left behind. And so, what I'm trying to say here, even though we have the amounts of you know, foreign direct investment increased, but also the inflow went to the affluent countries and not to the countries that need it. A key driver of digitization and automation of trade and post trade services, which has proliferated in recent decades alongside the considerable advances in fintech. Harnessing digitization for development through trade and investment must be a core ongoing objective for all stakeholders, especially governments, development agencies, export credit agencies, businesses, and customers. The FinTech revolution, including the application of blockchain technology, is gaining momentum in the global market, especially in asset facilitation and intermediation. We see it as well manifesting itself in trade services and payment solution, thus opening up opportunities for banks, intermediaries, and technology 
to listen to what I'm saying. The pandemic has accelerated the global transition toward the digital economy. But unlimited access to new technologies has already resulted in digital divide and inequalities. In many countries of OIC and member countries of OIC, the implementation of digital strategies remain an embryonic stage. Innovation leads to regulation, whose gaps are evident in the digital space. For ISEC, there is an added consideration. We are uniquely the largest Sharia compliant multilateral insurance institution. Sharia compliance with transaction structures, documentation, and digitally automated processes that is dealing with platform and connectivity is becoming more and more vital to all of us. This is crucial in promoting the orderly development of the digital revolution and preempting the digital divide in the Islamic finance sphere. Establishing digital infrastructure frameworks that can also support the cross-border regulation and harmonization is vital for e-commerce and mitigating the cyber, cyber security issues. Several technology solution providers have launched integrated service solutions and platforms for Sharia compliant trading, risk management, capital, and many market operations. This development has enabled Islamic financial institutions to seek transactional flexibility to select an alternative to the counterparties they contract, they contract with for their trade requirements. The digitization of Muraha transactions, for instance, have expedited obtaining financing and facilitation of procedures to meet the urgent need of clients. Digitization, as well, enables parties to embed the ESG and SDGs and sustainability consideration in the technology and system processes. Ladies and gentlemen, the Islamic Development Bank Group, including ISIM, has prioritized digitalization. At ISEC, we are committed to investing more in supporting our member countries' efforts to narrow the digital divide between rich and developing countries and with states and bridge the transition to the digital economy. ISEC has identified the role of technology in the trade as one of five key mega trends impacting global trade and investment over the next few years. Our strategic risk priorities over the year 2021 and 2024 include the development of extensive digitalization of processes, reporting, quantitative modeling, monitoring tools, and key risk indicators to flag emerging risks. The future of trade tech and its impact on global trade and FDI flows will see transactions and interactions between clients, brokers, underwriters, insurers, reinsurers, and trade providers becoming seamless to the insurer of the not too distant future. The trade tech encompasses digital security, the transaction integrity, digital letters of credit, and related fintech solutions such as cryptocurrencies, digital payment gateways, and digital supply chain solutions that drive the trade efficiencies. The long-term outlook, as I see it, is for the e-commerce exchanging connectivity to the entire trade ecosystem, for paperless processing, for and financing, the 3D printing, and IP will become essential business drivers. ISIC is also, as we have seen in the video, leading the OIC Business Intelligence Center. It's an initiative for the whole Muslim movement, which will play a key role in enabling MS digitization of the credit ecosystem that will ultimately facilitate further cross-border financing. The vision for the COVID is to provide the OIC member countries with best-in-class business growth and risk management intelligence ecosystem. Coordination with private and public stakeholders ensures the legal framework governing the collection, the treatment, and sharing of business data. The OIC 
objective is to create a shared platform through the OIC member countries to provide a cross border credit registry and make credit bureau services, compile and coordinate data and offer advisory and capacity training program services while efficiently adopting modern technology for credit reporting. The OBIC aims as well to accelerate trade with and investment into the OIC member countries by providing businesses with a detailed picture of the OIC business performance and credit worthiness, helping them make informed decisions and allocate capital with confidence. The digital transformation, you would agree with me, was underway before the pandemic in trade facilitation, intermediation, investment platforms, banking, insurance, credit enhancement, e-commerce, and risk management. These developments would be more coordinated under the aegis of the WTO and the United Nations CITRA. There are also critical cross-border risks associated with frontier technologies, which require global cooperation and coordination, notably in cybersecurity and AML regulation and technology transfers. The digital divide and access to the internet between regions and income groups is profound. According to the international telecommunication unions, the least developed countries have an internet penetration rate of 21% compared to 87% in the developed world. Data and digitization can also drive SME growth. SMEs are the backbone of economies. According for over accounting for over 90% of economic activities, 50% of jobs globally, and some 50% of GDP in developing countries. In OIC countries, 54 enterprises per 1,000 population are SMEs. Barriers to entry include the cost of adopting new technologies, competition for digital talent, the knowledge gap, and lack of confidence in SMEs. Digitization would also enhance financial inclusion by narrowing the gap between the formal and informal sectors, while the upside could be enlarging the tax base, the downside could be job losses. Digital transition thus must be created and coupled with retraining. Digital technologies have an enormous potential to unlock economic opportunities in trade, investment, agriculture, manufacturing, and services. But, as a recent report remind us, and I end my speech with this, despite the ubiquity of digital transportation and technology, value creation only flows from combining multiple components of the economy into the one ecosystem that we are trying to put together for the OIC community. With this, I end and I thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Mr. Faisi, for your insight into some of the issues relating to digital transformation in finance and investment and its impact on development. We will have some time for questions but later in the program, but for now, we are honored to have with us His Excellency Dr. Shirif Farouk. Chairperson of the Pros regarded as a national institution endeared to every Egyptian family and part of the country's culture. Please step up. السيدات والسادة الحضور الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بالنيابة عن معالي الوزير السيد الدكتور عمرو طلعة وزير الاتصالات والتكنولوجيا والمعلومات وبنتصل لك عن نفسي أتوجه لكم بالشكر لدعوتكم الكريمة على المشاركة في الاجتماع السنوي رقم 47 لمجلس محافظي البنك الإسلامي للتنمية 2022 تحت رعاية فخامة السيد الرئيس عبد الفتاح السيسي 
بس العرض هذا الحدث فرصه لتدارس التطورات الحديثه واستشراف سبل توطير العلاقات الاقتصاديه بين الدول الاعضاء في ظل التغيرات الدوليه المستمره بالاضافه الى فرص التباحث بين مؤسسات التمويل المشتركه والمشاركه وتعظيم الاستفاده من الخدمات والتمويلات. السيدات والساده الحضور الكريم ان استراتيجيه وزاره الاتصالات وتكنولوجيا المعلومات تدعم بقوه تحقيق رؤيه مصر 2030 من خلال بناء مصر الرقميه لما تحقيق من اهداف لتطوير البنيه التحتيه لتكنولوجيا المعلومات والاتصالات وتعزيز الشؤون الماليه وبناء الادراك وتشجيع الابتكار وضمان الامن المعلوماتي وحمايه البيانات وفقا لاعلى المعايير الدوليه ولتنفيذ تلك الاستراتيجيه تم توقيف استثمارات ضخمه للبحوث والتطوير تقديم فرص تدريب مكثفه وبناء شراكات فعاله بهدف تكوين قاعده من الخبرات في مجال التكنولوجيا المتقدمه مثل الذكاء الاصطناعي وعلوم البيانات وانترنت الاشياء للتصدي للتحديات التي تواجهنا. على الرغم من الاضطرابات التي حدثتها الجائحه الا انه كان له اثر في خلق حلول مختلفه لكثير من القطاعات اصدر الاستعداد المثمر الذي قامت به وزاره الاتصالات والتكنولوجيا المعلومات من انشاء بنيه تحتيه معلوماتيه قويه وهو ما دعم وبقوه قدره مؤسسات الدوله على تخطي هذه الفقره العصيبه عن طريق استخدام المنصات الرقميه والتقنيات الرقميه لضمان استمراريه الاعمال كما سبق ان قامت وزاره الاتصالات والتكنولوجيا المعلومات بتنفيذ العديد من المبادرات لتطبيق التقنيات الرقميه المتقدمه لخدمه المواطنين بشكل افضل وزياده الامكانيه ودعم الاقتصاد الوطني بالاضافه الى العمل على نشر ثقافه استخدام الانترنت وتسهيل سبل وصول المواطنين اليه ان التحول الرقمي في المؤسسات الماليه يشكل الركيزه الاساسيه وحدر الزاويه لتعزيز الشموط الماليه وتحسين الاداء للحصول على فرص اعلى للتنميه المستدامه وتسهيل عمليه نفاذ وتوسيع دائره المستفيدين من الخدمات أهمية وتظهر أهميته ماليا في العديد من الحلول في بيانها. توفير وتنوير الخدمات المالية الرقمية المقدمة للعملاء. إتمام عمليات الدفع والشراء وتحويل الأموال والمعاملات عبر الإنترنت وتطبيقات الهاتف المحمول. إتاحة كافة المعلومات أمام العملاء والمستثمرين بما يؤثر بالإيجاب على قراراتهم الاستثمارية. تتبع المعاملات من البداية حتى النهاية. وإتمامها في وقت أقل وتغشية تكلفة مقارنة بالمعاملات التقليدية. تيسير عملية مرور وتداول العميل على حساباته على مدار اليوم. أيضا تأمين كافة المعاملات الإلكترونية بما يمنح مزيدا من الثقة للمؤسسات المالية. وبذلك فقد أصبح التحول الرقمي من أهم المجالات الاستثمارية للمؤسسات المالية العاملة وللبنوك خاصة. بما يوفره التحديد لسلوك المستفيدين والمستثمرين لقياس رضاهم عن الخدمات المقدمه. ووضع الصوره الصحيحه امام مرتكز القرار باحداث تغيير وتطوير اليات العمل. ولم يعد التحول الرقمي ضربا من الرفاهيه بل صار جزءا اصيلا من الاعمال لتحقيق تطلعات العمال. الامر الذي سيكون له مردود قوي وايجابي على الارباح وسرعه دوران راس المال وجذب نوعية جديدة من العملاء وتخفيف العبء عن الفروع التقليدية ونقل المعاملات إلى الفروع والتطبيقات الإلكترونية وما سينتج عنه جذب مزيدا من الاستثمارات فاتحا مجالا واسعا لعمليات التمويل والاستثمار. قبل أن أختم كلماتي لكم اسمحوا لي أن أنقل لكم تجربة البريد المصري أحد أضرع وزارة الاتصالات والتكنولوجيا المعلومات وهو المؤسسة التي اعتشرت ان تكون رئيسي والذي نجح في تطبيق افضل الحلول التكنولوجيه على كافه الخدمات والمعاملات بما يتواجد مع متطلبات خطه التمكين الرقمي وبما يضمن تحسين مستوى الخدمات المقدمه للمواطنين والاندماج والتكامل المالي بين الهيئه ومختلف مؤسسات الدوله من خلال توظيف كافه الامكانيات لخدمه المجتمع في المجتمع بكافه الشراكات خلال فترة الجائحة نجح البريد المصري في ضمان استمرارية الأعمال وتقديم الخدمات المالية وصرف المرتبات والمعاشات وتقديم خدمات
بدء تمويل وكمان الصغر من يدعم الشركات العامله في هذا الموضوع. تزامنا مع خدمات التجاره الالكترونيه البريديه دون توقف او تاخير. استمرارا لهذا النجاح قام البريد المصري بطرح تطبيق يلا سوبر اب الذي يقدم حلول ماليه وغير ماليه مبتكره للافراد والتجار والشركات باستخدام افضل الجزء. بالاضافه الى امكانيه الادخار والاستثمار ومراقبه ما تتبع المعاملات اليوميه وهو ما يعد نموذج بعض المؤسسات الماليه في عمليات التحول الرقمي وهو ما كتب العديد من المستثمرين والشركاء الغربيين في عقد شراكات مع البريد المصري خلال الفتره الاخيره. وفي النهايه اتمنى لكافه الساده المشاركين في هذا الملتقى خالص التوفيق وصولا لمقتنياتهم من هذه المشاركات الاداريه التي اتمنى ان تكون خطوه ونقله في مواجهه التحديات بما سيجعله من شراكات بينهم. اشكركم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته. Our heartfelt thanks to Dr. Farouk for your uh, uh, very interesting remarks and experiences of digital transformation at Egypt Post, which has impacted on various sections of society through services such as pension and aid disbursements, government payments, and electronic collection with notification service and mobile telephony applications. I'm sure that these will be further explored in the panel discussion. Uh, which has come, or the time for has come now. Our panel discussion includes an expert group of international panelists. These comprise of Dr. Rashanin, Assistant Sub Governor, FinTech and Innovation, Central Bank in Egypt, Mr. Emeka Omia, Senior Manager, Innovation and Product Development, Afrexin Bank, Mr. Ahmad Mansour, Executive Secretary General, Egypt Post. Mr. Muhammad Khatib, President, Middle East and Africa and Global Head of Islamic Banking, Essential Software, and Mr. Usama Bohari, Chief Executive Officer at Fairless International Group. And I now hand over to Mr. Rafi Chico, Chief Executive Officer, and our standard who will moderate the panel discussion. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. We begin in the name of God, the most merciful, the most beneficent. Uh, it's a honor to be here, and I will uh, say that we have exciting panelists. Uh, we have uh, representatives from private sector, from technology company uh, companies. We have uh, a government regulator in financial services. We have a government agency that's serving uh, people with its services. Uh, so I'm, I'm and, and a multilateral. Uh, so I'm excited to hear and share with you real examples of digitalization uh, uh, and its role in enabling finance uh, and trade, trade finance and investment. So uh, a couple of quick things. I wanted to set the context a bit, but uh, Excellency Osama and uh, His Excellency uh, 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 had, sorry, had shared the great uh, context of the importance of di di digitalization uh, in our region, in our ecosystem. So I will not put uh, a lot of context. A couple of things I just wanted to highlight. In fact, one of our panelists, uh, Mr. Osama, had uh, mentioned to clarify that uh, the difference between digitization and digitalization. And this is a, you know, as we are all here to learn something and apply in our uh, practices, so digitization would be where we might just automate, let's say, a document and turn it into an online form or uh, data. But digitalization is the whole process of enabling digitization towards a business purpose and really uh, rethinking the process and the business use of the digital uh, opportunity. So it's important to have some of these basics down as we get to uh, the brass tack of the impact. Uh, the other thing I wanted to just highlight is that we talk about 
fintech and trade tech and digital tech as if tech didn't exist before. And I've had this conversation with some of uh, the panelists earlier. We had some really good chat. In fact, technology has been there, right, uh, for the better part of the last maybe four, uh, you know, through the past century even in, in different evolutions. So the latest evolution of the Web 3.0 or what we call the World Economic Forum called the four, uh, the, four uh, uh, the, the new tech and we're talking about fintech or trade tech is the latest evolution of new technologies that are helping us leapfrog further using these solutions. So, so it's not to mean that uh, technology didn't exist before, we're just talking about the next level that's helping us leapfrog. Okay, so with this context, uh, so and, and uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll just jump in given we don't have that much time and we'll start with uh, Russia as, as the central bank's uh, lead champion of driving fintech and innovation. Uh, you shared with us behind some of the great, uh, I asked what were the greatest accomplishments that you're proud of and you shared three very exciting ones. Um, if we can start with, uh, in context of those achievements and you will share with the group those, what those achievements are, how some of those would apply to supporting uh, uh, trade and finance or, or supporting the business ecosystem in general. Hello, Samani. Hi, uh, thank you, and um, welcome to Egypt uh, for every, everyone that is visiting, the guests and the members of the ICDB. And um, you're, you're absolutely right. Since uh, we've started uh, to have the fintech as uh, uh, the focus or on the top agenda of the Central Bank of Egypt since the launch of our strategy back in 2019, we've been working on a very methodological uh, steps and way for us to grow and to 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 thrive the fintech ecosystem. And yes, we have a, like uh, we've achieved a lot. Like uh, we've mentioned. Um, the launch of our regulatory sandbox and uh, the launch of the fintech focus fund with our three national banks have uh, have just put uh, uh, put their efforts together to have the, the largest uh, fintech focus fund and uh, hopefully in the region with the close to 100 million dollars and hopefully to reach the 150 very soon and uh, the fintech and innovation hub with the one-stop shop of the fintech so we have a lot of exciting things in order for us to start the fintech ecosystem in egypt and uh, for the purpose of one thing, uh, it's, it's a no-brainer that we are a fintech for inclusion. So uh, we need the financial, we need like the digital financial solution that actually helps us to grow the financial inclusion and to support the financial inclusion and to become a less cash uh, uh, society, of course. And this comes with relevant solution to the market, like. What exactly are we trying to solve and what exactly are we trying to, to reach for us to help the consumer to be more financially resilient and to have more financial needs? And this is the most important thing. So uh, we've, uh, we've played a pivotal role in, in accelerating digital access to finance, digitizing the, the access to finance. So we're going to find like new solutions happening on digital lending based on behavioral scoring to serve the underserved, especially the women. Um, we have like digitization of the supply chain finance to help the MSMEs, uh, putting finance uh, or embedded finance in B2B marketplaces to help the micro merchants on the ground. So, so, so we're doing a lot of efforts to enable digital solutions to help or to mature the, the, the retail and the MSMEs market. Um, and, uh, and to be on, and to, uh, I'll leave. I'll leave the rest of the rest of the questions so we can move on. That's great. I, I think you know uh, my congratulations at least. I think this fund that you're mentioning that uh, has been formed is an incredible. I don't know across the member countries if there's a bigger example of this uh, formation of such a uh, fund, uh, hundred million dollars supporting fintechs uh, by the leading financial institution, the stakeholder. Congratulations, as well as the regulatory uh, sandbox and uh, also the hub that's coming up. So yeah. I think I think that's great. I will j jump uh, uh, back and forth a bit and I'm going to jump uh, to uh, Mohammed uh, uh, getting straight to the brass stack of trade, uh, finance and investment solutions. Can you speak to uh, the fact that uh, we know, uh, many in the ecosystem know of the product IMAL, uh, IMAL as a solution that you develop, one of the pioneering technology platform for Islamic financial institutions. And now uh, with the Essentio, you're working on 
some trade finance related uh, platform, uh, I believe it's called Trice. Can you speak to uh, what, what is Trice, how is it facilitating trade finance and, and the ecosystem of uh, the region around this? Thank you. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, Isaac for inviting me to be again between friends and, and have this uh, great discussion. Uh, we at uh, Azentio um, and formerly uh, Bath Solutions uh, have created uh, a lot of technologies for the banking sector and uh, trade finance. Uh, we have a full module on trade finance. But in the last few years, we recognize that the fintechs are becoming critical uh, disruptors of uh, this industry. And we needed to address and, and work and be part of this new ecosystem that is being created. And we actually created two uh, fintechs already. Uh, one of them is Life. We started with uh, launching it in Oman and we are uh, looking Right now, we are trying to launch it in Saudi Arabia and UAE, which is uh, called IFIN. And this fintech uh, connects banks with retailers and allow uh, retailers, uh, consumers to do, uh, to purchase uh, any product from cars to homes to actually TV sets through Islamic financing um, uh, uh, products or, or, or loans. And, 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 um, we, the, the second company that you're talking about, which is Trice, it's a startup that we built that allow us to address the international uh, trade finance based on the new distributed at, uh, general ledger technology, which is uh, the blockchain. And we created an international trade finance uh, platform that allow all the participants to actually participate in that platform and democratize the process completely. We used to, in the old days, as you know, or uh, actually currently until now, the banks dominate this uh, process and, and the trade finance is heavily documented with a lot of paperwork and a lot of forms and, and it's really very cumbersome. So what we did is we actually created this platform that allowed to host uh, digitally all the participants from regulators, insurance, banks, and of course the exporter and the importer. And we do the full process uh, through that platform. Thank you. Um, I want to also acknowledge and congratulate. We're, we're at a private, IDB's private sector forum. Uh, and one of the goals is to develop the private sector's successes. And I, I find Pat Solutions story as a success story. Uh, uh, and, and having been acquired and going through that cycle of building an institution that is now transitioned to be uh, further uh, developed uh, as you're doing. So I wanted to also acknowledge. Thank you for Just that. Uh, highlighting the point you mentioned about, you know, I didn't want to just start and use the word blockchain uh, or AI because we want to really look at the use case and your uh, project uh, Trice, with Trice what you're uh, articulating and showcasing is how the distributed ledger uh, uh, platform, which is blockchain, is enabling document authentic uh, authentication or trust building verification and it improves and brings efficiency to the uh, processes. So I think this is a digitalization of the uh, trade finance part that uh, is being enabled. So thank you so much for that perspective. Um, I'd like to next, uh, if I can come, uh, Dr. Uh, Ahmed uh, Mansour. Uh, Excellency Sharif highlighted uh, Egypt Post's overall digitalization initiatives and strategies. Can you speak to how uh, some of the initiatives, uh, you know, today the Post service play a big part in supporting SME businesses. When we look at e-commerce, which uh, a recent study by McKinsey highlighted about 10% of the global GDP is being facilitated by cross-border e-commerce. How, what are the types of solutions that uh, Egypt Post is enabling to facilitate uh, SME businesses or businesses online uh, and so forth? Uh, thank you for the question, and uh, uh, I would like to thank you all for attending uh, our 
meeting today and I would like to thank also the Ministry and the ISDB for this uh, wonderful events uh, that actually are discussing a lot of things that's uh, related to what's happening around the world in these days. Uh, Egypt Post actually, as mentioned by Mr. Chairman, is one of the biggest uh, financial institutions in the country that's been serving Egyptian people for almost like 150 years now. So we have a lot of uh, trust that have been built with the Egyptian people, especially when it comes to uh, delivering their services, uh, even if it's governmental services or, or financial services or even the postal services, which is the main backbone services that we deliver to the Egyptian people. Uh, currently, we have seen that the new normal that have been affecting the world after the pandemic is changing everything around us, especially when it comes to the digital transformation. So the journey actually of the digital transformation has been uh, much boosted by the pandemic and what's happened after. And this is why they call it the new normal that we're living in. And one of the major things that we are focusing on after that is the e-commerce platforms what we are doing because we are the main logistic arm in Egypt uh, applying all the supply chain uh, supporting for the Egyptian people. So we have been uh, actually working on a lot of uh, projects, uh, governmental projects uh, to apply the main e-commerce uh, for delivering the services, for building a new platforms that can serve the people. But when it comes to the whole picture that you have to apply here in the e-commerce, you will find that you will need also to apply a lot of things uh, while doing it. Well, one of it is the uh, awareness for the people about the digital services, about the digital channels, how to use it and how to start using that technology actually in the business. And this is what we are also focusing on. We have been doing also a lot of effort with the Central Bank of Egypt to serve the, the financial services by, by serving the financial technology. We even have uh, an innovation hub that we are creating also now in, in, in the support of ITIDA and the Ministry of Communication and also with the central bank and other banks in the sector. This is actually not just to have the fashion trend of having a, a, a fintech hub or having an innovation hub or something like that, but actually if you look at the market, you will find that you need to start supporting the small companies, you start supporting the youth to deliver the services to the people using the digital channels. This is one of the major things that we are focusing on. Great, great, thank you. Uh, uh, Osama, I, I wanted to uh, come to you next. Uh, your firm, uh, Altaris International Group, uh, has been among the leading providers of e-banking solutions in the MENA region. What are some of the key areas that need to be, uh, that uh, need to go through uh, digitalization uh, to drive cross-country region trade, uh, regional trade and investments. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim wa bihi nasta'in. Very interesting question. Um, I believe technology is not the issue here at all. Uh, technology can do anything. And I think we all understand that, um, you know, whether through digitalization or digitization, or whatever it is. The real problem here or the issue is the cross-border um, uh, regulations and there's no standardization of documentation and that is the biggest challenge um, I wear another hat I, I'm with the ICC the International Chambers of Commerce and I represent Saudi Arabia and, uh, and the Banking Commission and digitalization of trade has always been in our focus and we're trying to do a lot of things but again the thing that really um, uh, stops the, the, the real wide implementation of digital trade is really to to bring the regulators together and for them to talk about the same um, set of documents or set of requirements because these really differ from country to country and I think that's the real challenge that we have now, once we do that and I believe our forum here uh, and I really thank ISDB for for this wonderful forum and, 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 and Isaac if we can really come together as, as the Islamic nation and then you know we agree on these rules the technology is, is, is just so easy. And, and I would like to say something about the technology. If what we see today when we talk about blockchain, blockchain is something of the past. That doesn't mean it's, it's, it's no good, but it's, it's evolving. Just like when, when first you know, uh, telephones were only used to call and then GPRS came along in the early 2000s. If you think about GPRS by itself, it was a failure. However, if it wasn't for GPRS, 
we would not have seen 3G, 4G, and 5G today. And I believe that what we see in, in technologies today, in, in the blockchain mainly, is nothing but the beginning of the true transformation of the way we do, whether it's communication or, you know, because now if you talk about blockchain, it's about distributed ledgers. And now we already see that there's hyper ledgers. There is book ledgers now, which is even much faster, a much bigger implementation of, of uh, blockchain. So technology is not an issue. It's really about the regulations. Great. I think that uh, leads me to Emeka at the uh, building on what Osama said. If technology is not the issue, and you as the senior manager of innovation product development at a practice and bank, which is a multilateral, and in your experience, uh, how, how do you relate to uh, uh, Osama's point about technology not being the issue, and, uh, and, and please share uh, some of the experiences you're having and, and what you're developing? No, thank, thank you so much. Um, first, uh, it's a pleasure to be here among these esteemed, uh, esteemed panelists. Um, so the African Bank is um, a multilateral institution uh, with a mandate to promote intra and extra African trade. Uh, so in activities, we grapple with these issues around how do we promote trade in Africa. Uh, in African trade is about 14, 15% compared to the high 60s in Europe and 58% in Asia. So it is, it's a real impediment um, that we're trying to solve. And I agree exactly with, with what you said. Um, you know, tech is not the issue. Um, the issue is how do we come together to actually provide a series of solutions that solve these problems. So for the African Bank, what we've done is we have an initiative we call the African Trade Gateway. Um, this gateway is really targeted to, to speak to the key issues that we see in traffic and trade. So let me give you an example. So, um, you know, you have an SME um, in Egypt who is looking to export or grow his business in Africa, access new markets. Uh, the issue he has really is where does he find information around what is possible for him, right? New markets, opportunities. It isn't really possible right now. I mean, you could do a lot of Googling if you want to. There's no reliable place to do that. So through the ATG, we are the gateway, we are putting it together. And even if he does find that partner he's looking for, how does he even trust? So for example, he finds a partner in Nigeria. How does he actually grow that trust to be able to, to actually conduct that business, right? So we've created a KYC platform that helps actually grow that trust between counterparties as well. And again, let's say now we agree to do business. The issue now is how do I take payments? These are simple issues that in Europe, you don't have that problem. Well, in Nigeria, there's Nigerian Naira. In Egypt, it's Egyptian pounds. With us, it's not compatible. So we use US dollars, right? Well, we've created a Pan-African payment system that will enable the, um, the buyer to actually pay Nigerian Naira and the, the business here to receive Egyptian pounds instantly. And to the point that has been made here, so once payment happens, we've also made it possible to access financing, not only from African Bank, but our key partners here as well, um, that will allow you to actually, in one single platform, find financing required to conduct a trade. And finally, how do I get my goods across border? So through that same platform, we're bringing together all the requirements for regulations that allow you to move goods in any border in Africa. So just an example of what we're trying to do, um, leveraging, I should call it, leapfrogging technologies to bring this to, to bear in our continent. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, great point. Again, you endorsing the point that uh, uh, besides technology, coordination from regulators and so forth. So, Russia, coming to you since you're representing the central bank. Uh, you know, certainly, the reg, the, the reg lab, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the sandbox. Speak to us about the sandbox and if, if there is some thinking about how regulation-wise are you thinking about technology, uh, fintechs, or innovation enabling cross-border aspects. Uh, uh, if, if, if there is uh, uh, thinking around that. But first and foremost, uh, about the, uh, yeah, the sure. sandbox. So the regulatory sandbox is basically like for any this solution or any uh, 
idea uh, that the, the startup wants to launch in the market and yet it has a regulatory hurdle or it's not regulated or it doesn't have like uh, the regulatory uh, uh, endorsement. So basically what we do is like we, we, we put them in a test environment which is very contained uh, and we test the solution together for the sake of how we can actually issue it in the market in a more controlled and, a, and, and having like all the, uh, the, the right controls of a consumer protection and cybersecurity and everything uh, contained within the solution. So coming into the uh, cross-border thing, and uh, this is something that us as a regulator talked before, is like one day hopefully we're going to have like a co-sandboxing, where how can we try out solution that is happening in one jurisdiction with our jurisdiction, and this is like uh, something that we keep on exploring, and I know that every regulation is different from one jurisdiction to the other, but hopefully we can actually land into a co-sandboxing in uh, something like the cross-border remittance or anything of, of, of a great need in the two markets that we can actually test together. Great. It, it uh, points us to the OBIC initiative that earlier we saw the video, which is cross, as you can see, it's quite an ambitious, uh, Osama, you were saying, it's quite an ambitious project, but certainly something that can be achieved and will be super uh, valuable, which is a cross-OIC or the IDB member country credit intelligence uh, sharing and, and a quality platform. Um, why, why, why don't we open uh, the floor for some questions uh, rather than going another round given the shortage of time and you know we'll, we'll circle back so uh, if, if we can take some questions uh, I see uh, a, a hand up back there behind the camera if someone has a mic uh, that we can get to just uh, state your name and ask the question please and then I'll come to the next question here I think it's, uh, can someone get a mic uh, down to the person here? Thank you. All right. All right, in, 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 in the meantime, uh, I will uh, take the question here and then I can repeat it because we probably have to repeat it. Please go ahead. Can you stand up if you don't mind and just state your name and the question? All right, and I, I should probably say we should limit to the topic at hand. Otherwise, well, that's fine be because uh, uh, till now we're uh, uh, since we've put the law uh, back in 2000, uh, 2020 that uh, so far we're not endorsing the crypto as the Bitcoin world, but uh, we're we're heavily this, uh, studying the central bank digital currency uh, and we're doing effort regarding this. Uh, so this is like the short answer of it. So uh, so you can know, but we can actually talk to it more when when we step. In to this panel and talk about it more. Right. Thank you. All right. Yes, gentlemen. Sorry, we don't have the mic, but yeah, we can just. So the question is, uh, and, uh, how does digitalization, which is going to make jobs redundant, so what are the efforts to uh, upscale or, or make sure uh, you know, there's new jobs created? Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, well, actually, from this question, I would like to also reveal some points that can answer the question about, yes, there are some jobs that's going to be uh, vanished. Yes, of course. And there is a lot that's going to be created because we are opening a whole new sector. This is the digital transformation era. We have a lot of business that's been created. We didn't hear about it. Even when you go to universities these days, you will find out that there is specialties that have not have been there almost like 10 years ago. And for other, on our side as Egypt Post, we have been um, for the last two years as our strategy that have been set by the board and the chairman that we have to go into digital transformation. We started investing in a lot of sectors that we were not investing in before. So we will find that the Egypt Post is investing currently in the consumer finance, in the microfinance, even on the blockchain, by the way, we are investing in doing some NFTs. So we are discussing if we can do it, it's for stamps. So there is a lot of projects that have been created, that's been studied that been 
thinking of these projects and all these investments is going to create a lot of job opportunities for the new uh, youth. And if you are talking about their own version of jobs that we know, by the way, youth and the millennials are not interested in these jobs anymore. Like they are not interested in going and visiting branches like the old style that we used to do. They are into the digital world, so you so have the to. Is is the it is. It is. Attracted to the. It is. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, very, very quickly, uh, and we're, we're one of the countries, I think the whole region is very, is very lucky, like you're saying, like the median age is like 24 years old, 25 years old, so yes, exactly like the, the new jobs or the jobs of the future are actually catered for this kind of youth, but again, uh, and since we've started the strategy of the fintech, one of the big pillars is talent, and we made sure that we have a reskilling and upskilling for the existing uh, for the existing employees just to reskill themselves. How we can actually teach them from zero AI to like an AI expert to a certain point of time in their career. So yes, I, I think there is going to be a challenge of resistance to change and everything else. But I assume like everything is turning digital, so they they have to come along the anyway. So. Mohammed and uh, Osama, if you could speak a little bit to the talent challenge in general in our regions. When it comes to the, you know, the, uh, the leapfrogging technologies that we're all uh, now talking about, that's going to help us leapfrog. Uh, how many people? Yeah, uh, I don't know if you've been following uh, what's happening in the world in the last twelve months, but there has a huge. They call it the great attrition, where basically a lot, almost uh, even in. And that includes all the whole world, including the U.S. A huge number of people just quit their jobs, and uh, we have serious problem in the technical uh, space. Actually, when uh, Brother Osama said uh, technology is easy, one of the biggest problems I think right now with technology is the availability of resources and the availability of the resources and the talent who actually understand. Uh, the, the, the technology in depth. I hear a lot of discussions, almost everybody is a technologist, everybody can talk about the technology, but actually when we uh, try to recruit people who actually understand these advanced technologies, they are competent in AI, competent in blockchain, this is absolutely not there, especially in our region. And, and, and even in the US and Western Europe, they're having problems finding these talents. So definitely at, uh, we have a talent crisis worldwide and in technology specifically uh, and, and, and I think right now a lot of banks and a lot of organization, almost every organization want to create an innovative unit inside of them. So they're competing all of a sudden with the IT companies and the, IT, uh, and, and the technology companies uh, for these talents. So definitely we have shortage of talent. Osama, how do you see it in Saudi Arabia and the region? Yes, um, I totally agree with uh, Mr. Muhammad uh, that the, there is a huge shortage of talent and it, it's, it is global. Um, even even the, the wages have just skyrocketed. Um, and it's not because of, not that the resources are not available, it's just like the implementations and, and the spur of so many um, uh, fintech companies that is coming about. So let's say I have a company and I have 20 guys or 30 guys or even 100 guys that, that are working you know, in, in the technology. But then a fintech company comes and that only needs two, three people. They're ready to double and triple the salary because they're such a small company and you know they, they can do that and, and, and build a, you know, a platform and, and start offering solutions. And that's really the, the, the main cause of the lack of talent. It's not like we don't have the talent. The talent is there. It's just been so dispersed uh, on a global scale. And we've seen this even at the Tatas of the world or the Wipros, you know, those gigantic Indian companies that they have almost unlimited resources. We see that they have huge attrition. A lot of people are leaving them to go to the fintechs uh, and that's you know, mainly the, uh, the, the real issue. And I agree with Mohammed is that I do that myself in, in our own company. Like we have a, we always go to the fresh grads we bring them from the universities, we put them on a six-month training course, 
um, you know, let them come up with the, with the technology to understand the technology properly. I totally agree with Mohammed. It's not like a, it's a matter of you know a couple of days and you know you, you're an expert in, in blockchain or or you know what have you. But you know you really need, you know you bring in experts, you bring in uh, professionals, and you put them on a on a crash course that is a six month uh, you know crash course that teaches you about the about technology. Then you start to become productive. And I think that that is the way, and, and there is room for a lot of people, you know, to be part of this, um, you know, ever-changing world. It's uh, potentially a, an item for the IDB group, or I say, because as a multilateral, enabling some uh, talent development to enable uh, transformation. Because our, you know, we, we see the stats in. We just have one last quick question, and then we'll have to wrap up. Uh, Thanks, man. Yes. There's no mic. Uh, there's no mic. I'm sorry. I'll I'll, re I'll try to repeat your question if you can stand up in this. Uh... Yeah. Uh, Give me the stage your question, or I'll really. Thank you very much. Of course, in uh, digital transformation, I think that we can talk about industry for the zero. It is still point zero. We have to promote it is still point zero, which includes digital on different sectors, finance, trade, agriculture, industry, etc. I would like to invite all of you in Senegal at Dakar at the February 10th to 12th. We have to discuss about the modularity and issues for African development and promoting industry products. Four dot three zero in partnership with Dubai. All of you are invited to Senegal at February uh, two, two, three. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll be there. Uh, so uh, I, I'd like to conclude. I know we've gone over time, uh, and certainly I think. Uh, the, I always say that uh, we don't have any organization like the IDB and we're blessed to have the IDB and always very grateful as a private sector uh, that, that's looking at all member states both less developed and developed and bringing uh, uplifting the society and our communities that, that, that are suffering. So, so con to conclude I'll just try to summarize uh, the session was about digital transformation. I hope you were able to see some applications of digitalization, digitalization uh, affecting trade and finance. Uh, one of the key highlights is it's not really about the technology. I think we get hung up on blockchain and AI. It's the application and how it's, it can be facilitated with the support of government, engagement of talent and private sector, and, and ultimately to affect change and bring efficiency to the financing ecosystem that we're talking about. I'd like to thank the panelists. Please join me in uh, thanking all of them. I think this was a great discussion. Thank you, everyone.
you very much. We are now going to have a quick presentation that from Mr. Mahmoud Kosmich, Investment Officer of e Finance Investment Group, that he is going to deliver his speech right now. We set up Mr. Mahmoud Kosmich, Investment 